I have five things that I have done and do, do against the hazard of money and for the helpfulness of money, and I hope they inspire you to find your way of doing it. And let me one other word here. Paul's so interesting in the way he deals with the people he loves and trying to get them to do what he wants them to do. And remember when he wrote to Philemon, um, he said, I could command you, but I don't for love's sake. <laughs> we know that you can command somebody you love. God does it all the time. But there's something about a command that's a little harder to perceive as love. Whereas entreating and example giving. So that's what I'm after. I'm, I'm talking as a father to his family here. I feel old enough to talk like that, even though one or two of you are older than me. But most of you... Okay, number one. First three, everybody can copy. Second two are a little bit different. I study to see and savor the supreme value of Jesus every day. And by study, I don't mean formal study. I just mean I make an effort. Study war no more in that sense of study. I make an effort by reading my Bible every day on a quest for a vision of God that will reassert His supremacy in my heart. I want to see him and his son and his work in this book every day in such a way that it makes money lose its effect. That's my goal. Or anything else that's clamoring for my soul. Notoriety or pick your idol. The goal in reading the Bible is to see God as so supremely valuable that other things assume their way lower place and you... Your idolatries fall away and your obedience becomes driven by what is beautiful than by this lash on your back. It's just a glorious thing if God would open our eyes, which leads to number two. I pray that he would help me see what I'm after. I don't assume I can get it. It's a spiritual thing. It's not a, an intellectual thing merely. You can stare at the Bible all day long and see nothing wonderful and nothing glorious and be moved in your heart, not the least, to be um, free from Best Buy. But if you pray the way the psalmist prayed, incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Satisfy me in the morning with your steadfast love that I may rejoice and be glad in you all my days. That's a good prayer to pray every day. Satisfy me in the morning with your steadfast love. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things out of your word. Cry to God that he would reveal his supreme value to your soul so you feel it. You walk into the day and he is so precious and so valuable and communing with him is so satisfying. Pornography loses its power and covetousness loses its power. That's the way I fight every day. And it's a fight to the finish. I have no illusions that between now and when I die, I can coast. I could make shipwreck of my life I taste it. It is war till you're dead. And the war is to see. It's to see. Number three. So first, study to see his value in the Word every day. And two, cry out to him and pray that he would let you and help you and make you see. And number three, I Daily, put my trust in his promises that the needs of this church and the needs of my family will be met. My God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Not all the things you think you need, but all that you really need to give him glory. They're going to be there, even if you starve to death. Is that okay? I get that from Romans 8. 
What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? No! In all these things, we are more than conquerors. I'll always have enough to glorify my King, which is all life is about. Life is not about food and clothing. It's about the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. All these things will be added. How much? Just enough to seek the kingdom. It'll always be there. God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Is that amazing? There's not a single good work God has ever or ever will call you to do for which there will not be sufficient resources to do it. You can never say, God wants me to do X, but I don't have the resources. Ever. That's awesome. If He wants you to do it, He provides the doing. 